take this opportunity once more members to thank the Kenya Renal Association, the International Society of Nephrology, the Scientific Committee colleagues, and more particularly uh, my team members of Eldorate for giving me this opportunity once more to share with our colleagues what we have. I must say, whatever you see here is not pure, it's not me, rather than it's a teamwork of the everybody in our unit in Eldoret. Can I have the pointer, please? So we are going to look at the, our experience. It's not a long experience, but I think it's worth to share with you, all of you guys. So this is a pictorial of Moi Teaching and Referral Hospital we saw yesterday. Next, please. Uh, I also wanted to share with you once more the same picture we saw yesterday, the Shoe for Africa, uh, which has been funded uh, and constructed by Ronald Ronaldo. Most of you are his fans. And this what when you share with him, these are the fruits we have as a country. Next. So as we all know, the first uh, uh, case of transplantation was attempted in the year 2019-02 by Embridge, where he transplanted uh, a kidney from one position to the next successfully. And that's where most people thought, yes, there's an opportunity. Next slide. Uh, we look at the indications for the kidney transplantation. So we do have the absolute indications and the relative. But mainly among the children, we tend to see focal segmental, obstructive uropathies, polycystic kidney, renal aplasia, HEA nephropathy, AQS, rune bailey syndrome, congenital nephrotic syndrome, among others. This is common among the children. Next. So absolute indications include the active uh, malignancy. These are contraindications, sorry. Active uh, malignancy, severe uh, respiratory symptoms, severe ischemic heart disease, severe peripheral vascular disease, among others. Next. Uh, what do the family need to know about the kidney transplantation? As we are all aware that kidney transplantation is a process and the family forms the community forms a very important vital part in the management of this patient. They need the process. They need to know the program options, the risk and the benefits, medication treatment, the lifestyle adjustment, effects of transplantation on the existing medical conditions, and short and the long-term outcome of the transplantation. Thank you. Next, reception selection is very important. And this is what we have, as I told you earlier on, our transplant process is a teamwork. Next. And this basically, we look at the following, the progressive irreversible renal disease, no active malignancy, absence of systemic disease, especially particularly maybe like lupus, uh, efficient family and social support system, and good compliance or what we call adherence to the medicine. Next. Next, please. Uh, they must have also established any renal disease. Recession should have life expectancy of more than five years. No evidence of active infection, no evidence of active malignant disease. We also evaluate psychosocial, psychiatric evaluation, absolute contraindication include presence of the potential harmful or antibiotic against the, uh, the donor kidney, antibodies against the AP, APO uh, blood grouping antigens, and antibodies against the HLA class one and two. Next, tissue typing is very important. And I wanted to know that uh, maybe share with colleagues, it's still a sad story for Kenya that 50 years down the line, we are not able to do this HLA as a country. I hope, Chair, 
uh, we really need to refocus this. And I'm happy, I shared with Dr. Barasal yesterday and she told me they are on the process at Kenyatta National Hospital. Uh, it's unfortunate that also at Moiti a referral hospital, we are also advanced. We're hoping to roll the first cross match next month. That's in the month of October. And uh, because we didn't know Kenyatta were doing it and Kenyatta National Hospital didn't know that we are doing it. And you know, these are very expensive process. Uh, APO incompatibility, panel reactive antibodies. And of course you look for the pregnancy, blood transmission, previous failed kidney transplant. Recipient evaluation. Yes, you consider a number of factors. Uh, as we laid earlier on, we look into the laboratory, we look particularly APO, CPC, UEC, CLFTs. Uh, we also do the urine analysis among others, including the radiological investigation, which are usually normal even among the adult population. Uh, we also do cardiovascular assessment. As we all know, uh, including the nuclear medicine, we want to thank the Gakan Hospital for supporting us on this uh, because they also help us in the evaluation, EEG, among others. The blood assessment also is very important because most of the children, they tend to have obstructive uropathies. And it's very important that we assess this before we transplant. Uh, also, I want to share members that uh, even patients who have blood uh, problems, it's not an absolute contraindication to transplantation. We have a few cases whom we have transplanted and they have continued with telep intermittent catheterization post transplant, and they have done beyond five years without a single infection, no single challenges. Vascular assessment is very important. Uh, particular CT, CT angiogram, Doppler ultrasound, iliac angiogram are very important. We had our own lesson learned that uh, it's very important you evaluate these particular uh, pairs. Unfortunately, something you need to be careful. Some patients can be, uh, can be tricky. They can be tired, they've given up. And most of the time when you have a CT scan, a normal CT scan for the donor, they have learned the process. So they will give you the CT scan of the donor instead of the recipient so that they, they, they think they can be helped. So be extra careful. Similar to the, uh, the same. Immunization, yeah, you are all aware, this is what we give. I forgot to put uh, COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, it's now a routine and mandatory for our patients to be to receive a COVID vaccine before uh, prior to the transplantation. Donor selection is very important, and this is very important. As we are all aware, we are doing living donation in our country, and this is what we also do in the Eldorate. Uh, we don't have any much challenges in terms of the donors. Up to now, I've never understood, and this is very unique because when you bring a patient, they'll say, we are ready, okay? And uh, I wanted to share you, maybe for the children, it's because maybe the parents have maybe a lot of care, a lot of love among their children. You find the both the mother and the donor, and the, the mother are willing to donate. So we evaluated also the donor. The criteria is similar, that they, the donor must not have any underlying problems such as hypertensive, diabetes, among others. Uh, why the living donation? Largely is because provide a great chance to successful transplantation. Uh, transplantation to be scheduled most of the preferable time and it helps alleviate the critical shortage of the deceased organ. Though we have not studied, but uh, we hope, I think Dr. Walla, uh, we are doing something on the same. Hopefully we shall be able to process on the same. So you also need to have a family discussion with them because it's very important that they understand that it's a free donation. You don't need to pay anybody. You don't need to coerce anybody. You don't need to force anybody to be a donor. It must be voluntary and always you counsel them and allow them to think and discuss 
not only at the family level, even the larger community. And this will help us in the issues of organ trafficking. And this is very important that you allow them time to discuss, they also understand and, and uh, before transplantation. And that criteria is of the same, we don't have that. So the transplant process is the routine. Basically you do the routine lab works, uh, including the COVID tests, which we do uh, at least two to three days before transplant uh, for the donor and the recipient and whoever is going to take care of them uh, during this period. And it's very important that they understand why we are doing this because of the same. Uh, pre uh, uh, preparation, we are lucky because we have immortal infiltration. So all our patients, uh, they do uh, immortal infiltration prior to transplantation and among others. Operation, I'll leave to the surgeons, but basically that's what happens. I wanted to share with you colleagues uh, later that uh, what we use as perfusion solution. Most of us, we get custodial solution, which is quite expensive, up to 30,000 Kenya shillings. But we have since developed our own solution in Eldoret, which is costing 200 shillings. And I'm sure you are surprised. We shall share with you that solution we have used for more than four years. No single uh, problem we have ever faced. For the children, yes, we go for, uh, after harvesting, we insert in the abdominal aorta because we need volume to perfuse the new kidney. And the, the right or the left iliac arteries might not be adequate. And that's the main difference between adults and children. And this is really uh, what we have done successfully. Okay. Immunosuppression, as we all know. So basically we do induction, but I will tell you something before this, that uh, 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 the donor and the recipient selection is very key that we choose to do low risk transplantation because as a center, we have not been able to do the high risk because we don't have the, uh, the capacity to do that. And that could attribute to why we have been successful. So most of the cases which we are not able to do, we refer them to the centers, maybe like Nairobi or maybe uh, other countries whom they can help us in the high risk patients. ATG, yes, uh, we also use uh, the same, but this was after deliberate consideration because every Monday uh, between 8 and 9, 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. is our uh, kidney transplant uh, meeting where we review every individual case before transplant. So usually we are ahead. We normally we are ahead of three to four patients or pairs of each so that every week, at least we're able to do one kidney transplant. And that's how we have been able to do the same as we prepare the other cohort, or uh, other pairs. We do have similar Vasilisimab, Simulex also. Thank you to Novartis for supporting us also on this. Uh, it's been regular for us for, for induction and we give to all our patients uh, on the day of transplantation, and then uh, we give on the second, uh, second day of transplantation. Calcinidin inhibitors, yes, we use a lot. I don't want to look at it, it's not different with adults. The only thing which I can tell you is some of the children can be high metabolic uh, guys, and we need to adjust their treatment either three times in a day, or you increase the dose, but you monitor. The big surprise we have, or the big challenge we have is monitoring, particularly the cyclosporine, the chrolemas, and we want to thank Akakan for supporting us in a big way on this. We did on our own and the results were bad. So we had to cancel it and we rely on Akakan and Lancet. Thank you guys for supporting us. Uh, also this, 
Uh, I think we have all those again. The Tuximab, yes, is available uh, to our patients, but rarely to be used for the transplant. But those who have other underlying problems like lupus, uh, maybe one of my colleagues will share on the issues of the lupus and the Rituximab, because we have around 23 cases we have studied on Rituximab with very excellent results. Post transplant care is very important. Complications, uh, surgical, delayed, uh, acute ejection, infections, malignancy are very key. Uh, I'm not going to look at the surgical uh, complication, but there are a number of them. Uh, delayed, yes, largely because of ATN, acute rejection, and recurrent uh, primary disease. Acute rejection, yes. And these are some of the things you need to be watchful all the time. Over time, we have gained the confidence. We don't have to worry anymore. And this has been really uh, a great success from our team. Uh, during the day, all of us, during the day of transplant and the immediate few days, all the team are there to support the process. Malignancy, yes, we have not seen much of this, and largely because of the, uh, the amount of the immunosuppressants we give to our patients, and maybe also largely because of the selection of the patients we are dealing with. Chronic Allocrap, this is something we are looking into. Uh, we have seen a number of, a few cases of rejections after like five, six uh, uh, years of post-transplant. But we also wanted to share with you that a number of our cohort have done very well, more than uh, 10 years post-transplant. And uh, we are really proud of it. And largely because of the same uh, teamwork. Infections, yes. And largely, uh, we look at why some of the crafts fail. One, chronic rejection, acute rejection, vascular thrombosis, recurrent disease, and adherence to the medicine. And this largely because of the, the fact that the NHIF does not support post-transplant care. Uh, I think these are big elements in the house. The NHIF are willing to pay 76,000 for weekly or monthly uh, hemodialysis and another 600,000 for the transplant, 470 for the recipient, 130,000 for the donor, and then they leave them and support it. I don't think this is ethically right for colleagues. And those of us who are in NHIF, really, you need to look at it. Uh, and it's very important that we push and uh, uh, keep more ideas to NHIF to convince them to change their attitude. Otherwise, the program might collapse. Uh, other recommendations, these are also very important, that this patient, they come for the trans transplant clinic, which occurs every Tuesday. And basically, we do the routine uh, uh, checkup. We look at the CPC, UECs. We look at the urinalysis. We look at the, the, the trough level of the immunosuppressants, among others, and the overall care. We also know that, that this care should go to the donor and also to the entire family, that they need to be encouraged. They need to be supported. We also need to hear from them what are the challenges they have. We do have posted the not rift for kidney transplant support group and this is largely because i know that among the children as they grow as they attain adolescence they change and i need i might not be available all the time but this support group has helped us to enhance to teach them and mentor them through the process of post-transplant care this is our transplant champions uh, we do have uh, three transplant surgeons, Dr. Mugalo, Dr. Kasiboy, Dr. Seno. We have the anesthetologist, Dr. Kirwa. And we have also as a, uh, as a center, all our post-transplant or rather all our postgraduate surgeons who are rotating in neurology must participate. 
uh, I didn't put their list in their numbers, names here, but we have a number because we believe in succession, that the future lies among the young Kenyans who will actually take over and make a uh, huge change in our country. Our program, we have our grandchild. This is our, the mother to this baby here. Who are you? This is uh, the, the adolescent we did at the age of 12 years. Now she has a, a, a child and we are doing great. Delivered at 1.8 kilos. I had the opportunity to receive the baby and uh, we are doing now very well. Unfortunately, as discussed uh, previously, uh, after like three years, four years, the kidney of the mother failed and uh, we went back. And that's quite sorry for us, but at least we can celebrate. We have a baby, uh, our firstborn baby into the program. This is the solution I was telling you. Chairman, I'm sure this one you have in a cacan. You have this molecule, you have sodium bicarbonate, everin, ringus lactate, no masaline. The cost 200 shillings. Dr. Kiapi, you have seen it. We call it a, a Eldoray solution. We call it Cheptinga solution, but has served us very well. No single uh, reported incident on the same. As said by Sok yesterday, uh, Dr. Bopengi, I like hurting my animals. These are my sons as we cross River Kerio. Uh, this is my Opie. When I'm free, this is what I do. Thank you, guys. <laughs>